Okay, so it's day 156 in the war in Ukraine, and the Russians have shocked me before, but I, I'm at a new level of being shocked. Um, I want to start here because, I, so if you're not familiar with me, my name is Darren Gertis. I'm, I'm just a professor, uh, and I do these daily updates about what's going on. I'm not Ukrainian. I don't claim to be. I'm not in Ukraine. But I do follow this very carefully, and I've done these daily updates now for a long time. Um, and so I, I want to start here because I, I'm just beside myself here. So here with some comments. I, I get a lot of Russian trolls who will say things like, you know, uh, the Hellas Romish Reich Deutschlander nation, better known as the Third Reich, was almost as much bigger than the German uh, general German territory. I did my master's thesis on the Nazis. Thank you. You can look it up if you'd like, but I know what I'm talking about. Uh, Reckless Abandon commented, Did you get the report that Zelensky ordered Himmers to attack a detention center on a DNR holding captured AVOS Nazis? We'll talk about that today. And there are mixed reports, and I'll let you decide what the evidence is. I was under the influence of RT some years and really, uh, read some of their articles there, but the masks have been falling off since then. That's good. I read RT and I'll show you examples of RT just to give some equal time. Now, next one. I gave your channel a try, but it's obvious that you only use sources from one side. It's not obvious. You haven't watched because I, I look at Pravda and RT. But when I see evil, I call it evil. I don't morally equivocate between this and that when this is clearly wrong and that's clearly right. So I'm not going to do that. All right, so here we go. We're going to start with Pravda. Russia will soon begin the final operation for real. Now, this is from Pravda, Russian Pravda. Pravda means truth, by the way. In early July, Russian President Vladimir Putin said that the armed forces have not started anything serious yet. So when Russia finally start the special operation for real, soon, sums up whoever this is. Uh, well, they better start stepping because here's here's the problem. Um, the Institute for the Study of War, I read almost daily, the Institute for the Study of War, Russia, Russian forces have not made significant advances towards Slavonsk or along the Seversk Bakhmut salient for the past few weeks and are continue, continuing to degrade their own offensive combat power in localized fights and in shifting to the south. Now, Here's uh, Euromedian Press. This is going to be very heavily pro-Ukraine. Uh, and where's the fighting? Well, the fighting is in Donetsk. There's these attempts here. There's Kar Kharkiv. There's a fruitless effort by in this area in Kurzan. Or Kurzan. The Russians dared to uh, build the pontoon boat. Okay, so again, they're very pro-Ukrainian and may have a, a little distorted view, but you at least see where the fighting is. Zaporizhia and the uh, Ukrainian troops carried out a successful actions and pushed the front line back a couple of kilometers. And But you can actually see in a map, this is new Ukrainian territory. This is new Ukrainian territory. So you're you're able to see where the claimed counteroffensives are, but you have to triangulate. So I have shown you Pravda. I've shown you Al Jazeera quoting ISW. I've shown you Euromedian Press. I'm showing you The Guardian in England right now. This is terrible. Video appears to show a Russian soldier castrating a Ukrainian prisoner. This was on Russian pro-Russian telegraph channels, channels, this video of this happening. Horrific video has emerged that appears to show a Russian soldier castrating a Ukrainian prisoner. Reports suggest the prisoner was subsequently murdered. Original posted, originally posted on pro-Russian telegram channels, the Russian soldier wearing a distinctive black wide-brimmed hat is seen approaching another figure who has his hands bound and is lying face down with the back of his trousers cut away. Prisoner is wearing blue and yellow patches identifying him as Ukrainian. Soldier in the hat who is also wearing blue surgical gloves is holding a green handled knife and reaches down to mutilate the prisoner as other soldiers abuse the prisoners. This is absolutely horrible. It is brutal. It is barbaric. It is a war crime. It is terror. It ought to stop. Nothing like that should happen. Uh, it's one thing to step on, like, look, I'm, I've been in the martial arts for years. It's one thing if I step on the mat, I'm in the fight. 
That's okay. It's same kind of thing. Soldiers fighting soldiers, one thing. Soldiers killing civilians or mutilating soldiers, or as we're going to see in just a little bit, soldiers who have destroyed other soldiers who were prisoners. War crime. That's what this is. Okay. While the Guardian has been unable to independently verify the authenticity of the footage, it has been widely shared on pro-Russian media sites as well as Ukrainian social media. Like, who's enjoying watching this? With some Russian users posting the image mocking the mutilated soldier. Wow. Um, Amnesty International saying this was yet another ex apparent example of complete disregard for human life and dignity committed by the armed forces of Ukraine. Next, this is Zelensky talking about this. This is his official, and I read his speeches. Um, Zelensky, every occupier who abuses Ukrainians, who tortures and kills, should know that there will be punishment for this. If some of the U uh, Russian killers hope that they will not be brought to justice, they will hide somewhere and let them know they will answer. In any case, geography, time, borders, walls will not stop a just retribution. That's Israel's policy, and it's worked really well for them. I add my own. There should be a clear recognition of the rush of Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism. And they got that yesterday. The U.S. Senate approved unanimously a resolution asking the uh, Secretary of State to provide this uh, designation. I'm especially appealing to the United States of America. A solution is needed now. The U.S. Senate did it. And I would also like, here's Zelensky thanking the U.S. senators who unanimously approved the resolution calling for the U.S. Department of State to recognize Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism. State Department hasn't officially done this yet, but unanimously, I mean, almost nothing gets done unanimously unless it's like happy birthday to so-and-so, she's 100 years old today. Very few things get passed unanimously, uh, but this is one because it, it's it's evil. Okay. Here, this is what I was talking about before. This is now for my friend over here who is saying, um, I, I gave your channel a try, but it's obvious you use only sources from one side. Here's a source from the other side. This is RT, Russian television. Russia claims Ukraine had a reason to kill its own POWs. Kiev's forces shelled a detention center holding Ukrainian POWs early Friday morning to threaten their tro own troops who may want to surrender, the Russian defense ministry has claimed. A large number of Ukrainian servicemen are voluntarily laying down their arms and know about the humane treatment of prisoners by the Russian side. The humane castration of prisoners by the Russian side. The abuse of prisoners, which is being documented. And this looks like a false flag operation. Now, this is what, what Russia is saying about it. Uh, so many Ukrainians are giving up. Now, now it's not that's not true. The, you're not seeing a large amount of Ukrainians surrendering. But this is what they're reading in Russia. This is Russian television. This is just an English news translation. According to Russia's defense ministry and local authorities, Ukrainian troops use U.S. supplies, Himmers. Himmers are just the bad guys, right? And if I was Russian, I wouldn't like Himmers either. But uh, they're saying that the U.S. supplied Himmers are what caused the strike on the detention center. Well, okay, let's look at, let's try to triangulate and see what other sources are saying. Okay, so here is the Ukrainian side. The acting SBU chief claims uh, security services of the U of Ukraine recorded a telephone conversation in which the occupiers confirmed that it is Russian troops who are guilty of this tragedy. Now, remember, take it with a grain of salt because this is the Ukrainian side, but we're going to try to triangulate on truth. The SBU also said in a statement, judging by the conversations of the enemy fighters, the Russians could have caused the tragedy by the explosives that they had placed in the colony. In particular, none of the eyewitnesses heard any rocket flying into the correctional facility. That's interesting. There is no characteristic whistle. The explosions happened by themselves. No return shelling was also observed. Yeah, that makes sense. Wouldn't you like shoot back at whoever shot at you? Okay, maybe it's too far and you just don't know. I, I get it. But that's just a little bit of evidence. Okay, here's also Interfax Ukraine. This is another. The AFU does not launch missile strikes on this prison. 
the Russian armed forces carried out a targeted artillery shelling of a pretrial detention facility in Donetsk, where Ukrainian prisoners were kept. Russian invaders pers uh, pursued thus their criminal goals to accuse Ukraine of committing war crimes, as well as to hide the torture of prisoners and executions committed there. Right. So if you did want to cover it up, doing this would actually be a clever way of covering it up. Um, the Russian enemies continued its propaganda methods of conducting an information war in order to accuse armed forces of Ukraine of shelling civilian infrastructure and the population, thereby hiding their own insidious actions. Therefore, such statements about the alleged selling of civilian infrastructure and the population by the armed forces of Ukraine in an outright lie and provocation, the responsibility for which bears Russia an aggressor country and occupier. Or whatever. Okay, so as you read this, the Ukrainians are saying the Russians did it. The Russians are saying the Ukrainians did it. How do we get to some kind of point of truth over this? Okay, well, let's try to understand the purpose. The purpose of the Russian shelling of the, of the strike, or Ukrainian shelling, whoever is shelling, the purpose is to disrupt agreements on their exchange in an attempt to hide the growing evidence of the scale of Russian crimes. So they're about to have a prisoner exchange, and if you need to hide that, well, if you kill these prisoners, you can kind of hide that. Um, now, that's a, that's a really interesting thought. That may be what's going on. This is classic, cynical, very thoughtful, false flag operation. Okay, now in the past, who has run false flag operations? Have the Ukrainians or have the Russians? The Russians have done this a number of times in the last five months. Um, and they would say things, and they would lie and and lie and lie. And now here's here's some evidence. So remember the the shelling in Venistra um, with that, the House of Officers. What they said about the House of Officers, which was a concert hall, there was going to be a concert that night. Uh, was that there was um, officials from the uh, Ukrainian Air Force that were meeting to have a meeting about uh, exchange of weapons, and we kill X number of them, and they lied about it. And there was no meeting. There was no uh, Ukrainian military there. And then when you had the Odessa, where like you had the agreement with Turkey, where um, Turkey and Russia and the United Nations and Ukraine all signed this agreement about grain transport. And then the very next day, within 12 hours, there was a Russian missile strike on Odessa. The Turks were assured, wasn't us by the Russians. The Russians lied about that. So they said, wasn't us. Then later on, they said, it was us when we struck a naval ship and we struck a some military transport. They didn't. They struck like a grain elevator or something innocuous like that. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was that's what it was. So they lie. Now, you can't really rely on a liar to tell you the truth. Okay, so if they lied about that then, what are they lying about potentially now? Okay, let's keep going. So here is Reuters. Reuters is a is a ind independent aggregate news service. Okay, dozens of Ukrainian prisoners of war have appeal appeared to have been, been killed when a prison building was destroyed in a missile strike. Deaths, some of which were confirmed by Reuters. Okay, uh, forty. Prisoners were killed, 75 wounded. A spokesperson for the separatists put the death toll at 53, and they claimed it was U.S.-made Himmer rockets. Ukraine's armed forces denied responsibility. Uh, said that uh, Russian artillery had targeted the prison for uh, to hide the mistreatment there. Okay. The International Committee of the Red Cross is seeking access. Ukraine has accused Russia of atrocities and brutality against civilians since the invasion and has identified more than 10,000 possible war crimes. Now, that seems to be more evidence that is probably Russia rather than Ukraine. I could be wrong. But remember, Russia is not above the war crimes. Remember Bucha. Remember um, other cities where just like civilians are gagged or raped or whatever. I mean, a lot of castrated today we see the news about the castration right so they're not above this uh it said the building was blown up by mercenaries from russian's private military company wagner wagner group the sbu said footage online showed that the windows in the same room survived intact suggesting that there had been an explosion rather than shelling from outside so there's multiple theories right that there was an explosion from the inside that there was shell that there was ukrainian shelling that there was russian shelling so we're trying to figure out what it is now, a spokesman for the Russian side said the political leadership of Ukraine decided to use a U.S.-produced multiple-launch rocket system HIMARS to carry out the strike here to veil the crimes that Ukrainian captives started talking about. 
Reuters could not independently verify the differing versions of events. Now, this is when you see something that's true. When you see that they explain the events and say, look, we can verify or we can't verify, that's when you can kind of hang your hat on whether something is true or false. Okay, next. What was going on? Well, at the same time, that this was happening, the first ships with Ukrainian grain were being loaded in the ports of Odessa region. There were 17 ships in the ports with almost 60,000 tons of cargo. Of these 16 ships, we had tonnage of about 58,000 tons, which will soon leave the ports. Now, here's why this strikes me as really interesting, because the, the Russians tend to, whenever there's a big meeting or a big event, tend to have missile strikes in terrible places like hitting civilian populations or a mall or a, a residential apartment building in a city that's nowhere near the war or do something like that to overshadow whatever the event is. And so it's just one more indicator to me that it's probably not Ukraine, it's probably Russia. Ukraine wants to make hay of this. They don't want to, you know, have it overshadowed by the video of the castration that happened or overshadowed by this horrible event of killing prisoners of war. Uh, on July 27th, the ambassadors of the G7 in Ukraine arrived in Odessa to check the launch of the grain. Uh, even Zelensky was there shooting a video talking about the same thing. So that is why I'm thinking it's probably just another piece of evidence that it was not um, the Ukrainians, but the Russians. I love the Institute for the Study of War. They gave brilliant insight to whatever is going on. And their analysis was a kinetic event killed and wounded scores of Ukrainian POWs and Russian occupied Donetsk Oblast on 28 July, Ukraine. Uh, Russia is uh, Ukraine and Russia are blaming each other for the attack and available visual evidence appears to support the Ukrainian claim more than the Russian. OK, so that's all that I have to say about that. As to the charge that I only show one side, I show RT and Pravda all the time. And here's just one sample of it. And I'm going to play this little video just so you can see what it's talking about. This is former president of Russia talking about a future map of Ukraine. And I'm going to let it play. This one, former Russian president presents future map of Ukraine. Ukraine is more likely to be reduced to Kiev and the surroundings than to ever encompass Crimea and Donbass Republic, says uh, Medyev. Uh, he shows the first map, in the, and it says this, in the mind of the president of Ukraine, damaged by psychotropic substances, this is what the map of this country's bright future will look like, and this is a map uh, before the 2014 invasion, which he calls uh, the 2014 U.S.-backed uh, coup or whatever in, in his stuff. Now, then he shows this map, which shows Ukraine is this tiny little slice around Kiev. Poland takes these seven districts. Uh, Romania takes a few districts for some reason I don't understand. And then Russia is uh, taking, almost swallowing up more than half the country here. And uh, that's what Medev, now if you think that this is just, now, this was just two days ago that I showed this. Um, so whoever is saying, well, you only show one side. No, I show both sides. And I try to go to the actual sources. You saw me triangulate. It was Al Jazeera, uh, BBC or The Guardian, uh, Zelensky himself, Interfax Ukraine, RT, Reuters, Institute for the Study of War. And here, I'm even going a step further. This, uh, RT is just making stuff up because it's propaganda. RT's not making it up. Pravda carried the same kind of map. And there's a link to Telegram. This is Dmitry Medvedev's Telegram channel where he's showing this map. So it's not just that this is what the Russians are seeing. This is what the Russians are saying. This is the former president of Russia saying this. And that's what's going on on Wednesday, July 27th. Okay, so that was just two days ago, and I try to carry these every day. Thank you for watching. If you're watching all the way through, you're awesome. Thank you for being informed and understanding what's going on. I do these every day. Subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow.